<laughs> Gotta add in some air horns there because one, the markets are absolutely pumping today, right? Um, <laughs> things are just looking beautiful. Green candles everywhere, right? Um, but look, guys, welcome back to another Saku Monsters Space. I am your co-host per usual, NFT Bossa. And I'm just glad to be back on this panel, man, with such amazing, beautiful people that I get to speak with on, on, a, on a weekly basis on spaces. Look, if you're here early, which I really do appreciate people being here super early in today's space, um, we have a lot to kind of just cover um, today, um, especially just getting some updates on the behalf of Saku. Um, but look, if you are here early, if you want to show support, highly recommend hitting that bottom right button, right? Let's get some more reposts, some more likes, some comments. Right in your comments, man. I want to know, you know, what are people thinking of uh, of Saku Monsters so far? Right? What are you looking forward to the most? Um, you know, we'd love to hear uh, the audience feedback there. Right? But hey, that being said, let me check in with this panelist themselves. Going to the man behind the account of Saku Monsters first, Jake. How are you doing today, brother? What's going on? Thanks, Brasa. Doing good. The markets are pumping, so it's super exciting. And uh, Saku Monsters is, is we're we're close to to bringing a, a really fun product to the to the masses. Let's get it! Hell yeah! <laughs> I appreciate you, Jake. Glad to know you're doing well, brother. I'm gonna toss this right over to your, your partner in crime, Jordan. Jordan, how have you been, yeah, brother? How was your weekend? What's going on, man? I'm so good. I was locked in with the egg. I took my egg for a walk. I uh, got some lunch with it. Wined and dined it. Gave it a kiss. Uh, that's how I treat my collectibles. You guys should too. <laughs> um look the sun's beaming i'm feeling good uh really just moisturize in my own lane uh you know just unbothered uh by all the bullshit just focused on saku um feeling super good we're locked in um you know it's uh it's just been an absolute pleasure and a grind and actually phase one just came to uh to a close we wow. pinned up the trailer we just dropped um so guys, check that out, show it some love, retweet, like, you know, do what you got to do, share it to your mom or, or dad or relative and, you know, make someone smile today with this uh, Saku trailer. But overall, I'm feeling good, Basta, feeling good, man. How are you? Dude, I'm, I'm doing amazing, actually. You know, what's funny, though, is um, I, I watched Dune Part 2. I won't say anything about the movie, but that movie ended at like one in the morning for me. And then my earliest space today was at five in the morning. So I got home around like 1.30, 2 in the morning, got like two and a half hours of sleep, and then boom, right straight to spaces. So <laughs> I'm like, it's weird. I, I, I get like my, my morning body clock alarm. Like I feel pretty awake right now, but I know like midday, I'm probably going to take a nap. I'm not going to cap there. Um, but Jordan, thanks for checking in, bro. No one, no one ever asks the host, how are they? It's always the host asking how people are, so... I do appreciate that, bro. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jordan, much love, bro. You know, Jordan, one of my favorite posts that I've just been seeing from your end is the the emotes that I'm seeing for, for Saku. You know, we're so um, you guys are cooking, bro. 100, yeah. 100%. Uh, we're just cooking them slowly and then, you know, sharing them. And uh, these are going to be something you can use within the chat um, pretty soon. And uh, we, uh, we got like 50 plus emotes coming, so... I'm just sharing them as they're being cooked and uh, glad you guys like them. They're so cute. Wow. Dude, yeah, stupid cute. <laughs> Absolutely. Jordan, thank you for that amazing intro. Look, we have two other panelists up on the stage with us today. One of my favorites being Knight from Haven's Compass. Knight, what is going on, brother? How are you doing today? What's up, Bossa? All good, all good. Nice to meet you, Jordan and Saku. I, I went through your Twitter looking awesome, cool stuff, by the way, guys. Um, always happy to chat with everyone, man, and especially when you're here, Bossa. Looking forward for this one. Absolutely, man. Thank you for setting time aside and wanting to join the panel. Um, that being said, man, we got two more on the stage now. We got Zyro. Zyro underscore I-O. Zyro, what is going on? I'm going to check in with you real quick. How are you doing? Hey guys, it's Vlad, the founder of Xyro. Glad to be here, happy to hear you all, and yeah, ready to go into this discussion. Let's go, man, let's go. I'm ready to pick y'all guys' brains. Last but not least, we got Knights of the Ether on the panel as well. Knights, what is going on? How are you doing today? Yo, what's up, Bossa? Fluke here, founder of Knights of the Ether. Excited to, to chat all things Web3 games. 
Um, I'm also going to try to refrain from using the term cook when we talk about eggs too much today, because I think you want to kiss your eggs and not cook them. I think that's an important <laughs> distinction. Um, but yeah, I'm also a nap maxi as well, Bossa. Uh, love a mid afternoon 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, it's the bull run here, guys. We got to be prepared. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to, you know, max out our, our capabilities. So yeah, excited to be here. Um, looking forward to chatting. Man, Fluke, you might be better than me, bro, because my naps are definitely not 20 minutes. I'd be, like, passed out for, like, two hours sometimes, bro. Um, so you, you got to teach me some things. Uh, <laughs> look, look, real quick, guys, I just want to say something. Um, you know, the title for today, Web3 Games Aren't Fun. Look, Web3 Games are fun, right? You just got clickbaited into joining this space. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there, there, there are some aspects of, like, how can we better Web3 Games, right? Not to say that they aren't fun. Right, I think a lot of these games in the in the space today is actually really fun. I think it's just about what can we do to improve that experience just a little bit more, right? How can we max that out, right? But look, before we dive in, I'm gonna say one more time: repost, like, comment. We, we are already at what, like, 500 people? We're at 452 people in the, in this second space of Saku Monsters. Last week was the very first space of Saku. So if you wanna if you wanna listen back, which I highly recommend, um, to get your alpha on what is Saku Monsters, who is a team, et cetera, et cetera. Listen back to that first space. But if this is your first time here, welcome. And I'm super glad to have you here with us. That being said, man, no more, no more chit chat. I'm ready to ask some questions, I'm ready to dive deep. Um, look, Jake or Jordan, I'm gonna keep bouncing uh, between you two as always. Um, just 20 minutes ago, right? You posted this trailer. And for me, I, I love trailers. I don't know what it is with trailers in Web3, but they just hit. <laughs> um, but look, you, you just mentioned phase one is officially wrapped up, right? And for people who are in the audience, people who have participated in phase one, um, can you kind of just give us a quick little recap? You know, what, what, what were the final results? How many people actually interacted with the app itself? Um, and I'm sure the numbers are astounding, right? But just to hear it from you guys yourself, you know, how was the phase one results? Yeah, sure. Uh, the results were, were phenomenal. They were they were way higher than we were expecting. I mean, we started uh, 50 days ago, and uh, over the last 50 days, we've kind of amassed over 60,000 people who uh, have tapped their egg and have coins on the leaderboard. Jeez, man, 60,000. Yeah. Um, dude, I was I was definitely terrible with like checking on my egg, but hey, when when the when my nighttime would come and I'm chilling in my bed, I pull out my phone and I check my egg. Best believe, I, I think I landed like thirty eight thousand <laughs> position. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm not the best at this, but yo, uh, this is fun. This is fun, and this is <laughs> this is what I enjoy the most. Um, but to add, just to keep adding on top of that, Jake, um, you know, you mentioned sixty thousand players. What can we exactly look for? like? Will there be a reward for round for phase one? Like, what are we looking forward to here with with what's been wrapped up? Well, yeah, absolutely. The, the award is that you were earning coin, and uh, that uh, that will be an airdrop in, in our coin. Ooh, damn, this is the out. Oh, damn, just like that. Airdrop, airdrop, airdrop. Man, this is how you, you stir noise in the space. You just got to say the right things on the space, and people people are just going to continue to speculate, right? Uh, but, dude, that's amazing. Uh, let, me, let me toss it over to Jordan. I mean, Jordan, what are your thoughts just overall on, you know, how was phase one? How did you think you guys did? What are your thoughts? Oh, I'm so happy with how it went. Um, you know, every day I just like look up Saku and go through uh, the feedback from the community and just seeing people hyped up uh, is really awesome. And, you know, just excited to be pushing on to phase two as, as much as I, you know, love, love phase one. I'm just ready to keep moving and keep pushing and the space moves fast and we want to deliver product fast. So excited to be uh, rolling out phase two in the new, very near future, very, very near future. Very near future, got you. Can we get any teasers right now, Jordan, on what can we be expecting? Oh, uh, gosh, man. Uh, Jake, Jake, I'll let you. <laughs> it's already starting. <laughs> we're, 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 we're 10 minutes in. <laughs> it's already starting. You knew the questions were coming, right? Come on, yeah. guys. <laughs> well, we have a lot of monsters that are that are going to start uh, circulating in Saku Monsters, and uh, we've only showed, I think, maybe six or six or seven of them publicly, but there's a lot more, and there's some really fun ones. Um, oh my goodness. You know, there, there's rarities, and uh, I don't know if we've ever 
ever uh, announced that there, there are shiny monsters too, right? So there's a small chance that you hatch a, a shiny monster, which is like a different colorway, similar to Pokemon. Um, the, the, the hatching experience, we're really putting a lot of emphasis on. We want it to be super, super fun um, and uh, just a great overall experience. So, so I, I think people are really going to like hatching their monsters. Oh man, I can't wait for that. Um, but look, that is, I think that deserves a whole separate space on, on what can be expecting on phase two. Um, but I appreciate all the information that you could share, right? Um, but look, man, today's topic, Web3 games aren't fun. And like I pre already pre-surfaced this, right? It's just a clickbait, right? It's not actually true. Maybe some games aren't actually fun, right, guys? And and maybe they do need some improvement on, on how they can get better. But I want to pivot and, and, you know, introduce today's topic in a sense where we kind of tackle, you know, what do we find, where, where do we find areas of improvement with Web3 gaming, right? And honestly, this is like a term that I'm just trying to teach myself and stray away from is like coining these gaming projects as Web3 gaming projects. Like these are just video games. <laughs> There's no other way to like coin them and, and like then we shouldn't be, right? Um but aside from that, right, and maybe we can kind of just start with, um, let, me, let me start with Jordan here, because I think Jordan, in the, in the last space, I think one of the questions that I had asked you guys is, um, you know, why, why did you guys choose the monster, like the Pokemon IP route, right? And, and did you yourself, maybe this is where we can start off, right, is the question is, did you see an opportunity with, for an example, um, I think I mentioned Pokemon Go in the last space as well. Like, did you see an opportunity, like, like a market gap for Web3, in Web3 gaming, for a game such as Soccer Monsters to kind of come into the arena, make some noise around, you know, the concept that you guys are kind of doing, right? And, and then in a sense, right, you, we've already covered with how successful Phase 1 has been, right, um, to then leading you where you are today. What, what, what are your thoughts here, Jordan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we planned... This, this is, you know, something that Jake, you know, had in his mind two years ago. This is a, this is not a, a thing we, we were, it, it's been in the, in the, in the works for a while and we just delivered it at the right time in a tasteful way. Of course, we see opportunity with the IP and we have big plans for the IP itself. I mean, I studied and even worked for uh, some top, some of the top projects in the space during the bear market, watching their moves and watching how, they scale their IP and uh, I learned a lot and I'm definitely, you know, using that and, you know, merging that with what we're doing to really, I guess, you know, shake up the space, shake up the gaming space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jordan, did you think that there was like this lack of like IP in, in gaming? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. And also like, as we mentioned it's like we're we're more than like a game i find like we're really trying to mm. bring back the feeling of of collectibles with saku mm. um and i can let jake kind of take uh take it from there on on what we're trying to do with with bringing that feeling of collectibles back yeah jake if you want to chime in man feel free yeah for sure i think we covered it a bit last space but uh yeah you know the idea is uh, at its core, is that NFTs right now, there, there's no identity to the IP. Uh, you know, you have these 10,000 piece collections that uh, are all different from each other. It, there, there's, no, there, you, there's no duplicates, there's no, oh, my friend has this monster, um, but I have three of these, let's, let's trade, let's swap, let's try and collect them all. There, there, there's no, it's really just, they're, they're, not, they're not true collectibles in my, in my eyes. Um, you know, I grew up collecting Pokemon cards, Bakugan, uh, you know, all those things, Go-Go's, little action figures, uh, and, and that's the experience uh, that I'm really trying to bring to, to Web3. And I'm very surprised it hasn't been, no one's really gone for that route yet, but uh, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, man. And um, it's interesting how you, how you kind of coined it there, because I think digital on-chain assets are, like, even, even explaining that concept to, like, a Web2 normie, like, it still won't make sense until you're really in this space and you have your own wallet and you're collecting the NFTs, right? And I know there's a lot of just like just straight raw collectors in this space, like people who don't even tr like aren't even traders. People just collect for the hell of it. And I, I find that to be a little bit more like 
not that it's entertaining, but it's more so of like you kind of just have a, an, an appreciation for what these assets are, like and how and how they look like, what they what they feel like, what they mean to you, type of thing, right? And then on the other hand, you have the speculation side of things, where people will only trade off like price action, price volume, things like that. And so, I I love what you guys are doing because I think the space needs something different in a sense that. There needs to be a different reason why we are participating in, in NFTs and what this really means to hold something in your in your digital wallet, right? Um, but look, I'm, I'm going to point the same question around to my panelists today because I want to I want to break the ice here, right? Is I think the initial question was just simply, you know, how can we just take what we have today, look at what we have today in the gaming ecosystem, and simply improve it, right? And and look, we have. We have Knight, we have Zyra, we have Knights up on the stage today. So what I love is we're, we're going to be hearing from multiple genres of gaming, different approaches in gaming, right? So Knight, I'm, I'm going to start with you, right? And then at also at any given point, if something catches your attention and you want to say something, just raise your hand. If you're on PC, just just wave at me. I got you. But Knight, to start off with you, man, what are your, what are your thoughts on just the general... Um, like sentiment around Web three gaming. Do you think people are excited when they when they participate in these Web three games, or do you think that again false incentives, um, especially with like tokens and all these things? Like, do you think that tends to draw the attention away from wanting to participate in a game just just for the sake of entertainment wise? What, what are your thoughts there, Knight? I mean, I do agree that it's false incentives. I think we already talked about that one time. Um, <clears throat> but there's no data, no analytics yet for that, right? I mean, we didn't see any game that launched with an airdrop campaign. Uh, that's, I mean, that's a full 3D game or whatever, right? Uh, and and after like 12 months, what happened to it? Like, we, we need data to actually know if Web3 games or their, or their style of marketing and whatever actually works, right? Um, for the whole uh, lifetime of, of such a game. But I do think we are definitely developing in, in an extreme pace, right? I mean, I never saw uh, gaming companies develop at this pace. I think it's because, you know, the, the intersection of AI on Web3 and, and funding and interest. And, of course, a lot of the Web3 people are extremely motivated, uh, you know, persons, right? So that's, that's kind of one, one awesome thing to have or kind of amalgamation of traits in one. But I definitely, I mean, you know, I can't reply yet on, on something like that with 100% certainty because, again, data data is king. Maybe in 12 months, maybe once Haven's Compass does its campaign, uh, once other games are doing their campaign, and after 12 months you see them, people playing them and so on and so forth, then definitely uh, I would say it's it's a pretty much a success Um also a success story, right? So yeah, yeah. Just looking, looking to see what happens in in the future. Absolutely, and and it's funny because I didn't even realize that myself. I feel like we don't have enough data yet to kind of measure what kind of games do people like playing in this space, right? Because I I feel like speculation drives the attention and and it drives the engagement sometimes. And so maybe yeah, you're right, Knight. Like maybe after like six months, maybe like after a whole year of of web3 gaming like this narrative web3 gaming bloomed in my opinion like last november last december like back when like meme land first announced their token and then you had overworld you had aof first like all these other gaming projects release and then ever since then it's like it's just been like a non-stop domino effect like i feel like just games are just constantly releasing by the week by the month you know but look i'm gonna toss it back to you knight and then we'll go to zyro here uh what are your thoughts there knight I just want to say exactly what you just said. I mean, before you talked about like November, December, it's it's kind of exactly what I was thinking and, and kind of exactly it. And you see it, like you see it with, when when you have an airdrop campaign, whatever you see, like all your likes and uh, going up in the thousands, people joining your space and so on. And then afterwards, it's kind of no one's there. Um, I mean, our analysts kind of saw that uh, on, on research basis on, on several projects that we research, right? So it's definitely something to look out for. Double-edged sword. Yeah, it is. It is a double-edged sword, man. Um, but look, I'm going to toss it to Zyra here. I want to get some different voices. Zyra, what, what are your thoughts on just everything that's been shared so far? Uh, yeah, guys. 
Yeah, my internet is a bit laggy, so I hope you will be able to hear me clearly. Mm -hmm. So, in my point of view, Web3 games uh, right now often uh, focus too much on making money through things like NFTs, uh, making games and projects feel, feel more like investments. Uh, rather than fun games, if you know what I mean. Uh, they can also be challenging to get into if uh, you're not familiar with the cryptocurrency, uh, which keeps uh, plenty of potential players and uh, gamers away from the project. Uh, also, uh, some of the projects and games still working on building uh, the kind of uh, community features that make traditional games more enjoyable and more fun. I believe that by... Uh, focusing on making games fun first, not second and third, uh, through great stories, maybe like easy access and building you know, huge communities, strong communities, we can make uh, Web3 games uh, so everyone will want to play. Absolutely. And Zara, you, you actually bring up a, a pretty interesting point, right? Is I feel sometimes, like I mentioned this in the previous space, like I was literally just hosting an hour ago, right? But I, um, I've been playing a lot of Helldivers too. I don't know if everyone else is familiar with that game. It's a pretty, pretty fucking awesome game to be honest with you. But one thing that I like notice in my rhythm of playing games is the moment I feel like playing a video game is I go directly to like my homies who are also gamers and then I hit them up. I'm like, yo, let's go play some Helldivers, right? And so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there's this social element in gaming that... I feel here in Web3 doesn't really have like it or maybe it is like, for example, I think a great example is like Nifty Island. I think Nifty Island is, is a really great example of bringing communities together into one platform. And then you have such a, a huge blend of IP people who are um, either holders, people who are just straight players, right? There's so many ways of like how, um, IP is being distributed across other gaming platforms, but I, I'm noticing that the social element can also be improved in, in the Web3 gaming scene. And this is where I think the concept and the conversation of digital communities, is is this a place for gaming? Like, is, is gaming a place for digital communities to be built? I 100% think so. I think we've already seen... Um, for example, esports. I think esports is a great example. You have so much like you have a huge fan base around certain gamers, around certain um, guilds in the space, and I find that very interesting. I just feel like here in Web three, we haven't leaned into that yet, and maybe right with Saku Monsters, with Haven's Compass, with with Knights, with Zyro, right? Maybe this is where we can start leaning more towards that um, aspect in gaming, where we include this social element that kind of drives that f that sense of culture in my opinion right that's how i that's how i remember my my favorite games ever it's not just about the game it's about like the friends that i made playing that game it's about like the memories that i made playing that game you know and with something as attractive as an ip that saku is building right i think that emotional attachment can further be enhanced because of this you know? and and to touch on that it's like once you have the emotional attachment built um, and people fall in love with the IP, it doesn't really matter what, you know, it's just like people become so patient with you and it also gives you room to experiment with your existing community and try different things, which I find really awesome. So I'm happy with Saku that, you know, building an app, you know, just already galvanizing a community so early, now we're able to, you know, push the boundaries a little bit and experiment with our existing community. And I'm, I'm really pumped to see other projects do this as well. Right. Right. And, and that's exactly like, the, yeah, you nailed it, bro. It's like, we want games in this space to empower users more than so drive speculation and, and have that be the catalyst to want to interact with the gaming ecosystem. So extremely, extremely well said. Um, but look, I want to, I want to include Fluke here from Knights into this conversation and just doing, doing a little quick little pivot. Um, you know, Knight, what, what are your thoughts on just this? I describe it as like a misalignment with these tokens and like the reasons why, um, these gaming projects are trying to lure people into their games. Like, again, I'm going to reference Saku here. Like, I love what they did where it's just like, it's just an app. You just open it 
whenever you get that notification and then it's like, boom, one tap, you, you, you're accumulating points, right? So like that, that process, that concept alone is very simple to the gamer, right? To the gaming mindset. I feel sometimes in other games, the, the, that process can get very complex. And it's, it's not that they're trying to make it difficult for the user to understand how to play the game, but it's because when you embed blockchain and gaming aspects, and sometimes getting lost in that sauce can like really stir different kinds of, I guess, complex systems in, in, in the process, right? I, I think that's where I fear blockchain can kind of take over too much is like we start to lose that essence of like does this even really feel like a video game right like i'm pretty sure many gamers are just so used to loading up a game main menu right start game choose an option like just simple step-by-step -step things we already know so my question is to you knights is just do you think that blockchain can sometimes overcomplicate and and take away that fun aspect out of the games what are your thoughts there, Fluke? Yeah, you know, I think it's a pretty broad question, right? And it also speaks to, like, what the current user base and audience in Web3 gaming is at the moment. Like, it's still a very nascent industry. You see a majority of users here to play games, but also to have some level of ownership or peer-to-peer -peer transactions or, yes, some level of investment and speculation. There are plenty of amazing games in Web 2 that don't have that aspect, but people come here to partake in that aspect. But you want the blockchain, obviously, to support the user experience. Some people love the shitcoin deck screener PvP game experience, and that's blockchain forward, right? And that's just a different audience, a different user base. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You're just building for different types of people. And, you know, to kind of bring it back to the title of this uh, space, Web3 games aren't fun. You know, fun is a tough thing to define as a singular concept. People find different things fun. So it's important to know, like, whatever the answer here is about how much should blockchain be integrated, what should it be for the first time user experience, should it be up front, should it be behind the scenes, there's no one answer. It's about what type of game and experience are you building and for what type of user, and that should inform you know, the answer to that question. And so mm -hmm. I can speak a little bit to how Knights of the Ether thinks about that, which is that, yes, we're kind of Web3 native. We're a Web3 native studio to come in and play our game. Uh, it's in the browser, which is amazing because it's a super low barrier of entry. Anybody can go and play right in their browser. But yes, you have to sign into a, with a wallet to start. And so there, that's a little bit of friction. Some people want the social sign in, but there's plenty of friction in Web2 games as well. You know, if you download a new Call of Duty or something on a console, you have a huge, you know, 50 gigabyte download. You might wait an hour before you start playing that game. Right. The barriers to get into playing games is still a lot in Web2. And it's just a different type of barrier in Web3 that feels a little bit new to the traditional gaming audience. And so there's some obstacles to overcome there for sure. But I think the industry is trending in the right direction of easier onboarding overall absolutely and you bring, up, you bring up a great point too like everyone has a different measurement per se on like what is fun to them like <laughs> some games that i've played in the past like definitely aren't like suiting my style of gaming i think i'm definitely more of like a competitive like that fast paced type of style gamer um and so when I do play games where it's like the quite opposite of that, it doesn't like bring me that, ex I guess that exhilarating feeling that I'm looking for in games. Right. But, but that's, that's where I feel like blockchain can also be a huge benefit, right? Because it's now it's about how does the technology enhance the in-game experience, right? I, I use this reference a lot and I always mention how, you know, in Counter-Strike, right, we were already essentially trading NFTs. We were already trading these, you know, um, these skins, these these assets that people would just value so much in the game. And I feel like in, in that's exactly what's going to happen here in this space, right? It's, it's, it's going to be one point where the assets in game are going to be so extremely valuable, right, that what we're seeing with Counter-Strike, what happened there is going to be exactly replicated going on in this space. And so that to me, it, it just piques my mind. It makes me wonder like, where, where are we really as far as like a progressive timeline? Where are we 
in Web3 Gaming, right? Are we still in this figuring out how to align ourselves with certain audiences, certain gamers, or are we at this point where we know what a fun game is and everyone has their own style, like we were just talking about? And I think it's now more so about what can what can we do with the current tools today, um, whether that's on-chain, whether that's off-chain, we we're talking today about the social element, right? There's a lot of these things that I feel are intangible that can go in the mix and this formula of what makes a fun Web3 game. But we're at the cusp of that. I genuinely believe so. We are at the cusp of that, you know? But look, I just want to do a quick little room reset. I want to thank everyone down there in the audience who have just been tuning in since minute one. Um, again, another conversation with Saku Monsters, right? We've covered just a little bit earlier today on... Why Web3 games aren't fun, right? We also covered um, the results of Phase 1 on the behalf of Saku. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that at the very end again, just for people who are now tuning in uh, in the middle of today's space. But look, if you're enjoying it as much as myself, I highly recommend hitting that bottom right button, repost, like, comment, bookmark, all of that goes a very, very long way. Um, and I, I want to keep this conversation going because I like where this is going, right? Um, but Jake, I saw you on mute for a little bit there. Did you want... Try me out for me to do so. Oh, was that a little misclick? <laughs> yeah, it was a misclick. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, but look, while I have you on the microphone, you, you just set yourself up there, Jake. Right. But <laughs> while I have you on the microphone, right. Um, you know, today's topic, Web3 games aren't fun. I'm, I'm curious, like before you were building Saku, right, Jake, like what caught, what caught your eye in this space to like, I guess relating it to the topic, right? What caught your eye as far as like, okay, I don't like how gaming in this space is lacking X or like, I don't like how in this space gaming is lacking something, right? What was that? Like, what drew you to want to build Saku? And like, outside of the mission to build an entertaining game, what problem or issue are you trying to solve with Saku Monsters? We'd love to hear your thoughts there. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it was definitely a hybrid feeling between, uh, you know, I, I didn't see collectibles, digital collectibles uh, on the blockchain um, kind of be built the way I, I always wanted them to be built. But uh, on the gaming side, I guess I saw a lot of these games that were coming out that were, you know, pushing the play to earn narrative. Uh, and I think that slowed down a bit, which is great because play to earn has, uh, you know, if it's purely play to earn, it, it, I've seen a lot of games that just weren't fun to play. The mechanics were, were broken, and uh, the long term scalability wasn't really there. But um, you know, it's not to say it's impossible, but it's it's tough to get an ecosystem to support that model. But uh, yeah, I guess I saw a lot of games that were just carbon copies of, of existing AAA uh, titles, um, and just kind of leaning into the blockchain as a as a gimmick, and yeah. uh, you know. I think we also touched on this last last Monday as well. It's like if you're creating a game, you you want to make sure that uh, it's it brings some uniqueness factor to the table, right? Because if you're trying to build a you know a Call of Duty uh, one to one, but on the blockchain, uh, I don't think I don't think the players will come just because it's on the blockchain, right? Right, right. And oh man, Jake, you're you're stirring up the hot spicy questions today because. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think that any any succeeding Web2 gaming giant, and let's reference, like, I don't know, Call of Duty per se, right? If someone in this space is trying to build the next Call of Duty, do you think, like, that in itself is almost a trap? Because what would make people want to get off Call of Duty to then be like, yo, let me go play this other game that looks exactly just like Call of Duty, right? But you just have this new term blockchain embedded into it. Like what are your thoughts on that concept, Jake? Yeah. I mean, like look at it in, if, with a web two lens. Um, you know, if you, 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 if you look at battlefield by EA, I'm not saying it's not a successful game, but it's definitely more niche. The, the player base is more niche compared to call of duty. And that's run by EA. Right. If, right. if they are sinking millions and millions of dollars into a competitor to call of duty and, and, you know, people look at it as like a more niche uh, game, and you know it does have its differences too. It's more vehicle based. It's bigger mass, and you know, bigger maps and stuff. Um, but but imagine if that was even one to one to Call of Duty. They just wanted to make a more like small base multiplayer uh, game, and and it's EA, and they're having trouble like competing. Um, 
the, 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 I, I don't think uh, it's. I think it's going to be very, very difficult to find success doing that uh, with Web three and, and with the with the revenue models that uh, that come with it. I mean, yeah, yeah. most of these people creating games and uh, most of these companies creating games in Web three are uh, a pretty indie level, right? But that's right. what's expected when there's a new space and opportunities. It starts with the indie studios, and then the the big boys come later when they see that uh, indie studios are finding success. Right, right, and th- and that's where like I was mentioning earlier. Like, I wonder what, as far as the timeline, like what's next? Like, are we re- are is the next thing in the pipeline where we see these Web two giants enter in the space? Because per se, one of th- the one of the games here in this space are killing it, right? And so therefore, it's like proof of concept, right? It's like lead by example. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think if, if companies start leaning into their IP more, um, we can get to somewhere like that, you know. Um, and to, and when you lean into your IP, you become a household name, and then and then the big companies hear about you, and they're like, oh, we could do something like this too. And then the space grows all together. Exactly, exactly. And w- why do you think, though, Jake, like, why do you think here in Web3, as far as the gaming aspect goes, like, why haven't we seen these projects lean into the ip aspect like i feel like ip is such a huge still to this day underrated like factor of why i think web3 is dope right but why do you think we're seeing that lack in 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 the games nowadays uh i think my leading theory on that is as an entrepreneur and and visionary and, and you know you've been in this space for a while and you're like okay what can i do how can i put into this uh this space what kind of, what what positive can i bring it's easy to start thinking okay well you know so and so is very successful in web 2 wouldn't it be cool if all this portion of it were or the assets here were on the blockchain and then you start building and and you almost have this like one tunnel vision frame of reference to to build out what you what you want in in the space um and you know it's it's much easier to go that route than to be Okay, let me try. It's hard to build a a, a powerful IP that that's, uh, doesn't look like a knockoff, right? Like yeah. IP, I, and especially marketing a new IP and getting people introduced to a new world, it's tough. Um, and you know, I think it's much easier to look at something that already exists in in, in Web two and then build a direct uh, you know comparison, but on the blockchain. Right. Um, so I think it's important to look at uh, the IP there. Absolutely. I mean, let me let me toss it to you know the, the CMO of Saku. I want to hear from like a marketer perspective. Jordan, like, what are your thoughts on just when it comes to these these Web two giants and and them entering the space, right? How do you think they should market themselves into Web three, where they can lean into things such as IP, um, and and aside from you know, I guess the 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 gaming experience, you know, if, if I imagine EA one day creating a battlefield, a Web three battlefield, right? How do you think, like, what is the best approach to introduce something like this to the space? I think it's about, you know, first off, before just diving in, it's why, like, these projects are paying, you know, $40,000 a month to advisors to help them strategize and, um, you know, build their IPs. It's because those advisors provide something that is very hard for someone just entering to, to understand the space, which is like having your ear and showing up here and scrolling Twitter 17 hours a day and participating in spaces. It's just something so crucial. And I think, you know, that's something that I do every day and something I want to keep bringing to SAG was like paying attention to the culture and, you know, just riding the waves. I think there's so much opportunity every day to, you know, take our IP, for example, Saku, and just play on trends and narratives that are happening in the space and just, like, slowly uh, spoon-feeding people, like, Saku monsters. But let's say there's a meme going, for example, the, uh, you know, what Nick just did. He went super viral. (laughs) (laughs) Jordan wants to post a Nick photo so badly. I I wanted to do it so badly, but I'm, like... pushing back. (laughs) We're not not posting. (laughs) Look, we're not going to do it, but I'm saying, like... uh, there's so many moments like that where we can take the Saku monster and, you know, just, you know, do playful illustrations or animations and, you know, slowly build up the IP that way. And then there's obviously the traditional uh, web two routes of, of scaling the IP, which I don't want to bore people with, but I think you can just do a mix of both things. And, you know, I, I believe about spoon feeding people slowly, you know, mm-hmm. slowly then all at once. Yeah. You know, first of all like what immediately came to mind with your take jordan is like 
Budgie Penguins, right? Like these guys are trending on Jiffy. Like whenever people want to respond in like in Instagram comments or like even the family group chats, like people are, are sending in like Pudgy Penguin GIFs. Um, same thing that I see with like Clinosaurus, right? Usually on a meme post, right? Especially if it's like in the Solano chain, right? You'll find a Clino comment <laughs> in, in the comment section, but it's like a meme, right? And I, I feel, yeah, like that's exactly how I would want to see Saku like kind of just branch and, out, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if you know Basa, but I worked with Pudgy for several months, um, you know, and learned a lot about um, how they're scaling their IP. And it's definitely not, it, they're, they're doing, you know, they're, they're very, very creative. I'll just say that with what they're doing to push their IP. Uh, and it, it's super inspirational. And obviously you see a lot of projects just, you know, uh, you know, copying the strategies and stuff like that. But I still think there's a lot of things in Web2 that are untapped uh, in terms of what we can do to scale our IP. So I'm excited to, you know, one step at a time, Baza, but we're going to get there. And I'm yeah, excited yeah. To, there's a lot of activations we have in the pipeline that I'm just super excited to uh, to roll out. And again, it's just about spoon feeding the people slowly. We got phase two on the way, but uh, the IP, it's, it's going to be in your face. I promise you. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that 100%. Um, look, I, I, I feel right now in, in the current gaming space that we're, we're still driven by a lot of like these token, like I think it was Jake touching up on it, right? Like you have play to earn, play to airdrop, right? Which is fine, right? I, I think these incentives are needed especially to kind of just garner attention, drive drive retention in the space, right? I mean, I say this all the time, but Web3 truly is an attention economy. Um, and I mentioned in the last space that I was hosting that I feel like we're just borrowing the same audience, the same users from different communities. And then we're just, you know, borrowing their attention. And then we, we use their attention for a certain amount of time. And then whatever the next big thing is coming, right? Everyone just shifts over there, right? So... I, I feel right now that we we need to work on like user acquisition very very much. Like I think with this with the help of this bull cycle though, I, I think we're going to see a ton of new liquidity in the space. We're going to see a ton of new eyes up uh, in, in here in Web three. But what's different from this bull cycle that I feel with the last bull cycle is it's not just IP plays anymore, right? You have the gaming narratives. You have even AI X Web three coming out. Right. So you have a ton of new subcategories here in the Web3 ecosystem. And I think that's what's interesting about this upcoming bull is that there's so many options that people can kind of put their money into. Right. But that's the core basis of it is this these retail investors, whatever you want to call them. Right. These normies, when they come into this space, it's immediately going to be about where can I deploy my liquid where it can go grow in value. Right. I think that's. Again, that's that whole financial speculation and what drives drives this space, right? But the point that I'm le that I'm leading here with is, I think gaming is truly going to revolutionize the way that users are onboarded into this space because ecosystems for the past three months, I would say now, are leaning more towards a gamified approach, right? Where there is more of an experience when it comes to entering a community for the first time, right? And because of this experience, right, it, it shapes how memorability within certain projects are, are built, right? Or, or they're, they're created. And again, I think that in itself is still such an underrated concept in this space is like, we don't lean into enough of like, how can we create a really fun onboarding experience for every single user that joins a project, right? And it's more than just joining a Discord, verifying your role, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just, how can we elevate that? I, I guess is where my head's at. Um, but look, we got 12 minutes left in today's space. I do just want to get into one last topic with with this panelist here today, but just want to say one little quick thank you to everyone who's been tuning in again. Um, I don't realize how fast these spaces fly, but that only means one thing, right? If I'm if time is flying, that's how I know I'm really enjoying the space. So I really appreciate um, my panel and everyone down there in the audience for making it memorable. Um, but look, one last topic before we officially look to wrap up here soon. And I'm going to start with our guest speakers. I'm actually going to start with Fluke here.
Fluke, man, you know, I, I like asking this question just because we are essentially in the middle of a bull run, right? Bitcoin is just literally set a new all-time high today. I think we surged above like 72K just for a little bit, right? So we're kind of just hovering around that that number now. But where would you personally want to see gaming like get better from here, Fluke? And this could be from anything. It could be from the gameplay. It could be from the IP, everything that we kind of discussed today. But personally, in, in your lens, what would you want to see different with Web3 Gaming moving forward? Yeah, again, such a great, broad question with so many, I think, possible answers. I think there's been a lot of great discussion already around, like, IP and, you know, developing story and experience. And in gameplay, of course, can always get better. I think we still haven't had, like, a killer Web3 game success, you know, at the level of, like, a Web2 game. Um, that really leads with gameplay and core game loop, right? Mm, so yeah. I think there's a lot of space there for, for the industry to grow and just what a fully realized Web3 game can be. But I'm also really looking forward to unique use cases of blockchain and, and Web3 in gaming, because that's why we're here, right? To use this technology in a way that elevates the gaming experience for both the users and the studios. So... Um, one thing I'd love to shout out is, you know, Treasure Dow over on Arbitrum, which is a gaming ecosystem that Knights of the Ether is a part of. Their vision is really a lot about interoperability and creating primitives that can be used like tokens and, and uh, economic assets and, and characters mm. that can be mm. used across multiple games, 5, 10, 15 games in a way that, you know, you could have shared block space that the weather outside affects the gameplay in one game or if i sell this item in, in knights of the ether i can then use that to buy an item over in kaiju cards and shared battle passes all these experiences that come to a game that are enabled by the public ledger of blockchain so i think that's a really interesting space to watch as well and one that we're committed to building on at knights of the ether absolutely man and again that's one narrative kind of like how you just painted right now fluke where it's very much tailored to the overall, I think, mission for these gaming projects, but I would love to see that get expanded as well. So really great take. I'm going to toss that same question around um, to Zyro and Knight, um, and, and we'll go in that exact order. Zyro, you know, get, uh, bull cycles here, right? New liquidity, new eyes. But what does that mean for Web3 Gaming? Where do you want to see Web3 Gaming improve and get better from here? Uh, yeah, but to, in my point of view, to make Web3 gaming better for everyone, uh, we need to simplify how players start playing, making uh, the entrance as easy and appealing as uh, in traditional games. So this will not only help everyone to enjoy these games, uh, also it uh, can be like... Uh, we can tell by this easy entrance a lot about technology to the new uh, newcomers and mm -hmm. users in Web3 mm -hmm. gaming. Also, a good idea is to involve players uh, more into making decisions about the game, like through things like DAOs, and uh, make sure that the game grows in ways that players really want it to grow. Uh, and also, we can make sure that uh, our gaming communities are welcoming and diverse, uh, creating games that appeal to all kinds of players, not just for some specific kind of players. Uh, as uh, my point of view, we are excited, excited about the future of three ga of, of uh, Web three gaming, and I hope that together with you guys, with everyone in this space, we can make it uh, more bright, inclusive, and appealing for everyone. Man, Zyra, man. Well, first of all, Vlad, love hearing your takes on on space. So I'd love to keep hearing you um, in, in spaces moving forward, brother. Um, thank you for that. Frankie, thank you for that. Um, can't even speak. Um, Knight, same question to you, man. Um, you know, where, where do you want to see gaming at the end of this bull cycle? I mean, what is this? What, what, what will this even do for gaming on, on a broad spectrum? What are your thoughts there, Knight? To be fair, for gaming as gaming, nothing. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? If Bitcoin is at a million dollars, maybe just put some eyes on it. If, if you have some token stuff. Right. A game. But, you know, you need to have a fun game for it to be gaming so that people actually play it, right? So... Yeah, I know the market is heating up very good. Maybe some people can, you know, raise funds or do whatever they want um, if they don't even have a company or experience in game development. Uh, but in the end, you know, you need a cool game. Um, what doesn't matter what type of game: hyper casual, casual, mobile, AAA, indie, whatever you want. 
you need to have something that's fun and usable. Um, and I would say the only thing that it might is, is it might put some eyes on this sector, right? Like the market's moving mm. up, then people see, ah, oh, there's gaming in Web3, and then yeah. kind of pushes it forward. And I hope that's that's kind of the case. I uh, don't hope for more projects, you know, jumping in. and uh, Because in 2016, 17, and up to whatever, I mean, you see a lot of scams and so on, and a lot of people, people losing everything and I, i'm absolutely against that i don't like that right so yeah, so hoping, yeah. hoping for it to, to 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 stay you know getting better you know teams raising funds what they need uh building great games great products but also kind of you know again it takes some some bad stuff also happening and hopefully those don't happen so yeah man that's what i'm saying man i think <laughs> one thing that i've learned during the bull cycle is to like quadruple verify everything like you really never know what what one false link can like do to you. And again, I've seen so many horror stories, um, and I just don't want to see that repeated. Especially if you're a newcomer in the space, I think that's one of the worst ways to lose someone. Is like, you know, you get them on board into this space and they get scammed. They're like, "Yep, never ever again <laughs> going to mint an NFT." You know, uh, but Jake, I see you unmuted, man. What's up? <laughs> I wanted to know if you saw what happened to Von Doom, who uh, we work with with Sack, who. Um He's been uh, someone, someone that we that we has been a huge help with us uh, over the last month. But um, did you see what happened to Von Doom yesterday? No, what happened? He uh, has his ordinals, and he wanted to move his ordinals to uh, uh, an uh, iOS app wallet, and he downloaded oh. he downloaded an app from the iOS app store that was a fraud app, fraudulent oh. app, um, and he got scammed, and his ordinals got uh, got rugged from him. Um, which is crazy because Apple has like a very, very intense due diligence process when it comes to uh, getting on their app store. So I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, like, do they have the team that's qualified to do QA, t- QA testing for, uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, making sure that, that the blockchain, the smart contracts are, are safe? Absolutely not. But it's crazy that, uh, that you know, a fraudulent app was allowed on the app store. And uh, he sent his ordinals over and they got, uh, they got fished. Man, dude, that's terrible. Um, I think it was uh, it was Vovo from the Magic Eden team. She she posted the other day that there's this f- um fake Magic Eden wallet app um up on the App Store. And what's fucking scary about that was like a week before she posted that, I was on the App Store looking to see if Magic Eden has their own app, and I saw that exact same app that she posted, but then there was no reviews. So I was like, okay, this is probably a fake one, right? But oh, fuck, I can just just imagine, just oh my god! But no, that's terrible, bro. <laughs> I Isn't hope that he, crazy. Yeah, I, I don't. I still hate how there's no like recovery protocol for like people who really lose their assets, and like it really does suck. Like that shit is essentially gone forever, you know. But um, yeah, I remember that, that that's terrible. But look, we got three minutes left. I want to say really quick again, thank you to the panelists today, Knight nights uh and, and zyro i think he zyro just keeps rugging by that bottom up uh, but no i really do appreciate the three of you for just sharing your, your intake uh, your intake your takes today uh and again <laughs> just moving forward right we're gonna be hosting more of these soccer monsters in the coming weeks um but look i have a, a question from a user uh in the comment section below it and caught my eye actually um so to jordan or jake question is will the users affected by the lockout bug get their rank reinstated even after missing a week or so of taps, what was that response there? Uh, am I, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, good. yeah you're good. Um, yeah, we're working on a on a solution for that. Uh, obviously, that uh, that's a, that's super annoying for for users to have been locked out for a week. Um, keep in mind that uh, this week we it wasn't a full week of taps; it was per, more like two or three days. But uh, we're gonna find a solution. I mean. Obviously, we want everyone logged into the to the app and, uh, and not to have any issues there. It, it's super concerning to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, again, I, I, I want to make sure that I was just reinstated for people who might have experienced the same thing. So again, guys, team is very much aware of, you know, the crashes and bugs. So just expect a, a, a big update on that uh, very much soon. But look, Jordan, Jake, I extracted the alpha from you in the beginning of today's space. If you kind of just want to reiterate you know, I guess the results of, um, of phase one and I guess a little teeny tiny glimpse of what we can be expecting in phase two. We'd love for you guys to take over. Go ahead. Sure. Um, just want to thank, uh, you know, Knights of the Ether, Knight and uh, Zyra for joining us today. 
um, really appreciated your uh, your outlook on the on the current state of Web three gaming. Um, so thanks for joining. But uh, yeah, for uh, another recap of of kind of what we're what, where we're headed here is uh, phase two is coming very soon. It's not one of those situations where you have to wait uh, months and months for us to put something together. It's been, <laughs> been working on it for for years. Um, you know, phase one was just a small little glimpse into the the window. Uh, of Saku Monsters, and uh, we're really, really expect a really fun experience when it comes to collecting. Like this has been the the dream since since day one, and uh, you know it, it it's it was hard for me. It was it was a lot of anxiety for me to have Phase One out and and give such a small picture of uh, of Saku Monsters um, when there's such a bigger plan being worked on, and uh, you know so we uh, we're getting there. And it's going to come soon, and, and the experience is going to... I'm really proud of the, of the experience we created. Absolutely. Man, that's huge. Jordan, anything you just want to share on your behalf uh, before we officially wrap up this space? Yeah, we're we're locked in. I mean, just stay tuned, guys. Uh, and we put a lot of work into the trailer you see above. So on the Jumbotron, check it out. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, uh, you know, if your favorite show, if you finish that anime on Netflix, you have nothing to watch, uh, just bookmark this trailer and just, you know, run it back a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> get those impressions up All right look guys i'm gonna play this for the entire panel today you guys have been amazing amazing speakers and to everyone that they're in the audience you guys have been amazing listeners so again guys same time same day every single week monday um 1 p.m est 10 a.m pacific for all my california people like myself All right but hey this has been another Saku Monster Space. I want to thank everyone once again for showing up, tuning up. You guys could have been at any other morning space to show, but the fact that you show up here in Saku Monsters means a lot to myself and the team here. But hey, that being said, I am your co-host, as usual, NFT Bossa. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting the past hour with these amazing panelists. And we will see you guys next time. Again, stay safe. Check everything twice, thrice, quadruple times, whatever that means. Right, be safe out there, guys. Happy pump day, happy Monday, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.